right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from San Diego. And today I'm joined from Portland, Oregon by Naira Perez. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Yes, of course. Of course. Welcome. And Naira is the founder of Spring Hill Digital. And Naira is going to talk today about paid media in social media. So here's an interesting thing. I mean, a lot of people uh, who are used to doing, you know, maybe advertising and Google AdWords and all of this kind of stuff, they still kind of struggle a little bit with social media and particularly when you've got new new newer th- newer platforms like instagram where they really don't have any clue how to use it so what, what is your what is your advice to people when they start to dip their toe into paid media and social media so i always recommend my clients uh to go into those channels that are new to them uh mm-hmm. via organic posts figure right. out how to interact with your audience first uh where you're not investing a whole bunch of money and, uh, and part mm-hmm. of your budget. Um, learn how people react, what kind of content they like, and then make the transition to paid media. Because what happens is that if you're used to Facebook and try to enter yeah. Instagram, you're going to approach it the same way and probably not succeed. Or, you know, a newer platform will be TikTok. In TikTok, right. you cannot do exactly what you did in Instagram because <laughs> the audiences are different. Yeah. And especially, I mean, when it comes to things like TikTok, I, I have seriously no idea what TikTok really is. I know my son and those, they all love it. But I think when you're at, mm-hmm. you're at my time of life, it's just like, I have no idea what that is. So, I mean, I guess the other thing is to figure out uh, if your audience is, yeah, I mean, if you have a broad audience and your audience are actually adopting or are or, or on these platforms, then obviously you're going to have to find some people who can help you with understanding those platforms. Exactly. So get get uh, an expert to help you with the platforms. Again, first organic, and then you're going to paid media. Mm-hmm. But also, just simply because the the platform is popular, it may not mean that your audience is there. Mm-hmm. As an example, yeah. we were talking about TikTok is. Um, thus far is a very young audience. So yeah. if you're selling something that young audiences will not need or will not be able to afford, uh, maybe you watch the platform, but don't invest media mm-hmm. dollars in it. Go where your audience is hanging out, go where it is appropriate. And that's the first mistake that a lot of people do. Just, just you know, see a platform that is super popular. Everybody's doing it. Shall we do it? Well, does it make sense for your product? Is your audience there? If those answers are yes and yes, then let's go for it. If there are no, then let's watch it. Yeah. So, but it's interesting, isn't it? Because uh, it's it's these platforms, the demographic shift quite quickly, don't they? I mean, mm-hmm. if you think about it, if you think about a Facebook once upon a time, was you know it started off there was a lot of younger people on it and then they just all left and now it's just basically middle aged and upwards right you know I mean the young you know the younger people like you know don't it's sort of like exactly. Facebook and then Instagram became a great place for all of the younger people but again the young a lot of the younger people have kind of left Instagram and they've moved on to TikTok and to other mm-hmm. other platforms so I guess you have to uh, you have to analyze it over time and see actually is the demographic shifting on this platform and maybe my customers wouldn't have been on Instagram a year ago or two years ago but maybe they're starting to be on there now because it's an older demographic coming in there. Exactly and there are many ways that the audience can evolve. One of it is well that person just aged right yeah. so it used to be a young audience and now yeah. it's a mom with two kids mm-hmm. um but other times it is the adoption of especially parents is a per- perfect example they want to be in the platforms that their kids are in mm-hmm. therefore you know it's like i just want to see what they're doing in tiktok so i get an account and i start you know interacting with my my kid or with other people especially now that um most of the audiences, especially with parent, parents and kids, mm. are in the same space at the same time. So I can see TikTok actually evolving really fast from uh-huh. just younger audience to now their parents are like, well, what is it? And uh, t- teach me. I have now maybe a little bit of time. And so I can totally see that evolving and 
cross contaminating <laughs> audience. Yeah, yeah. I can say, I don't know. I just find every time I look at TikTok, I feel my IQ goes down, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> You need a uh, tutorial. Yeah. That's all you yes, need. Yes, I know, I know, I know. No, as <laughs> as my as my fifteen year old son just likes to say to me regularly, because Dad, you, you just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> and he's probably right. So as you start to okay, so if you get you do the organic thing, and then you realize yes, there's an audience mm -hmm. here for me. Maybe it's on Facebook, maybe it's on Instagram or whatever. What are some of the best ways to approach the the paid media? Because you can waste a lot of money very quickly if you're not careful. Yeah, yes, you can waste a lot of money, especially if uh, you are doing a B2B product mm -hmm. and decide yeah. to go into LinkedIn advertising. Mm -hmm. um, LinkedIn advertising is easily 10 times more expensive than Facebook or Instagram. So you really have to plan it in advance. So I always start with, let's see who is your audience. Facebook and Instagram are the same platform for advertisers. Um, so we can actually analyze a lot of our audience habits, uh, where are they, what do they consume, and really target people that would be interested in your product. Mm -hmm. So that's your first step. Have an avatar or a profile of the person that you're, you want to um, target that could be your customer and find them through the tools that Facebook and Instagram give you and define them very well. And then you define what, the, what you want them to do which is the other difficult thing because we yeah. all want sales. I get sure. it. But the ad may not be a direct sale. You, it may be the first step in getting to know you. So tell the audience, what's the next step? What am I going to do next? Um, and then from there, define a path for them to get from where you, they are to where you want them to go. So those are the three steps that big general um, strategies that I will say you need to adapt. Know your audience, where are they, who they are, know what you want them to do, and then after they have done it, what's next? And they find that path through your website or through the experience mm -hmm. that they're going to have with you. you. You need to define that path. Otherwise, you're just letting them out loose in your website and they don't know what to do. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point, because I think often a lot of times people just kind of put the ad up and they, you know, direct it to maybe a landing page and then just leave it at that and think hopefully yeah. all flows from there. You've worked with, the, you've, you've, you've advised and worked with a lot of companies. What are some examples uh, that you've seen that would have worked really well? Mm -hmm. Yes, we actually had a client, um, they were a plus size uh, clothing company, mm -hmm. and um, they were actually an aggregator, they will get from other brands and just right. all of it together and offer it to their audiences. And when we got them as a client, um, their cost per click was really high. And once we took the first step, which was analyze your audience, we redirected those ads. Um, also, we analyzed how going back to the beginning of our conversation, mm -hmm. how audiences were interacting with the content in Instagram, um, as an example, was our most successful channel um, because we saw that actually influencers were a big part of um, the culture that their mm -hmm. audience was having, the experience right. that they were having in Instagram. So what we did is we coupled up with, with, with influencers and um, have ads that were part of the influencers um, we were using their pictures. Um, it was a partnership, a win-win. We will drive people to the influencers. The influencers will drive people to us. Um, and the, the lifestyle pictures, we learned a lot about what the audience liked. We especially like, and I'm just going to go a little bit more yeah. into tactics, but we loved Instagram polls because we put up an ad that had two ways of styling a product, one with belt, one without a belt. It was a very small change. But mm -hmm. we learned through those polls and audiences interacting with our ads that actually we, the, the company had been styling the model wrong. Oh. They were modeling, yeah, the, the dress never had a, a, a belt in the pictures, but audiences told us overwhelmingly, like 75% said they liked it better with belts. So um, a brand that is paying attention will know from now on, similar dresses should always have a belt. 
Yeah, so and that, that's, a, end, that's a great, great example. I'm just saying yeah. that's a great example because obviously um, what you were doing there with Instagram is you were using, instead of just doing one thing and that's like doing a sponsored post or an ad or whatever, mm-hmm. you were using, you were using influencers, you were using polls. I presume you were using them like Insta story polls and stuff like yep. that. And yep. so you're using exactly. all of these different elements and bringing them together, which I think is, is mm-hmm. fascinating. Yeah, yeah. And um, we were able to lower it, um, their cost per click down to a fourth of what they were getting whenever they weren't with us. So Mm -hmm. not only that, but you create the audience knows that you're listening to them. And it creates a nice community where actually um, this community will defend the brand if anybody, you know, is is the internet. So People yeah. have very strong opinions about what you're doing and how you're doing it. And the community itself actually defended the brand. It started constructive conversations. Um, it was really, really a nice um, success story on how to take something that they were almost giving up on advertising on Instagram mm-hmm. to actually Instagram is now going to be your best channel. Yeah, no, and I can see that. I can see that where the audience now feel a little more, more invested because they feel like they've helped actually that this is they their input has been taken. So they're, you know, more invested in the brand than they would be with maybe someone else they don't have any contact with. Mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have to say, I think Instagram's a, a great place. I've just, I find all the Instagram ads completely addictive. I have to find, I have to discipline myself to not to, not to get too caught up in them sometimes. <laughs> yes. Yes. They are addictive. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if are, we're doing have, our job correctly, then they are. Yeah, yeah. Um, what are, is, do you have another example of somebody who did it? Um, how about, a, do you have a LinkedIn example perhaps? Yes, yes, we have a LinkedIn example. Actually, um, I have uh, clients that are software as a service as clients. Mm -hmm. So their clients are, um, you know, another businesses. Yes. Um, This is actually one about planning what's happening next. I had a Mm -hmm. client who we were advertising. We had really good ads, really good cost per click. Um, And so once in B2B, normally the life cycle of that, add that when people come in from lead to sale they're way longer than in a b2c mm-hmm. um, yeah, so yeah. it could be six months or it could be two years so the interesting part is that whenever you have not analyzed the third step which is what's next and you have your crm all planned out if you mm-hmm. don't have that then you don't know how long it takes so at some point the client decided that social media was not working for them. LinkedIn wasn't Mm -hmm. working for them because although they had a lot of good leads, um, they weren't seeing conversions fast enough, Mm -hmm. right? So um, they decided to stop uh, against our recommendations. And guess what? As soon as they stopped, um, six months later, their their leads that we had gotten them started to convert. Uh But because they stopped, uh, they those leads also stopped at some point converting. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't, they only looking back, you can see, oh, this chunk of leads that happened after we stopped our ads actually came from the early part of the ads. And why are our leads now not converting? Oh, because we're not advertising. Mm -hmm. So uh, just be aware. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's it's a good point, and especially managing the expectation of the conversion life cycle of something. Um, as you mm-hmm. say, it's not a it's not a case of somebody clicks on the ad and LinkedIn and um, and the business is ready to buy two days later. It can be a long process of getting to know you as a company. Exactly, and LinkedIn it's interesting because people move jobs and they move mm-hmm. um, companies and. They move industries. So you have to be aware of that. As a person, you like what you like. You like strawberry. I'm going to always buy ice cream that is strawberry. I'm never going to buy something else maybe. So, but as a business, you may be um, doing accounting for a dentist today. Mm -hmm. And maybe tomorrow you are doing accounting for a gym. So um, we we need to have that into consideration. And also that... Uh, B2B players or B2B um, audiences can be divided in the person that can make the purchase, which yeah. needs one kind of message, and mm-hmm. then the person that influences the person that yeah. is going to make a message. And so you need to know that 
uh, reaching the person that is going to make the purchase, it has to be the right moment, the right time. Everything has to be the right message, the right offer, and then it happens. But if you're reaching the influencers around, the, in their environment, around them, then you need more time from mm -hmm. becoming a lead to the time they can actually make that influence um, into the, the person that can actually purchase. So you have to take all of this in consideration. Um, and also, yeah, I, yeah please. No, I was going to say, and basically then you have to, as you were saying, you have to have multiple messages ready rather yeah. than just like think I've got one message and I'm just going to beat that one to death. Exactly, exactly. Because you may be reaching the wrong person with mm -hmm. a very good message, but it's, it's the wrong person or it's the wrong time. Mm -hmm. So. And given given the situation that we're in today, obviously, with a lot of people are uh, at home and there's a lot more people online, uh, maybe, you know, there's, they're more virtual than they've ever been before. Um, do you think this is an even better time to be investing in, uh, in, in digital media right now, just given the fact that you've probably got the biggest audience you've ever had? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Plus, also, a lot of events have been canceled. Yeah. So you have that marketing budget that you were going to destine to conferences and meeting people and traveling. And now you have that marketing budget that can be very useful online. Mm -hmm. Now is the time. People are more online. They're also a little bit more distracted because they're not yes. at the office where their entire concentration goes into work. They have kids. They have things going on at home. Um, so you have to take those two things into consideration. but. Definitely digital is a good way to be now because also if you cancel all those events, if you cancel other things mm -hmm. that were going to happen, your brand awareness is going to decrease and you do yeah. not want to be behind in mm -hmm. your brand awareness. You, Whenever we all recover from what's yeah, happening yeah. today, you want to be at the same place as you were before and not trying to catch up. Yeah, no, absolutely. And maybe even a little bit ahead if you uh, if you do it the right way. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, this has been fantastic, Naira. Thank you very much for this. Uh, so before we go, all of Naira's uh, contact information will be in her contributor bio, but please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. So at Spring Hill Digital, where you can find us at springhilldigital.com, um, we specialize in paid media. We do paid media for B2C, uh, direct-to-consumer, and um, also B2B, just business to business. Um, we don't specialize in one industry, we just specialize in paid media. I do believe that um, having learned something in one industry can be transferred to another industry or with a modification. So uh, we put teams together uh, that are experts and that want to work in your account. So um, in that sense, they're happier coming to work and they're happier uh, <laughs> doing what they like to do. So you and them, we all win. <laughs> Excellent. Fantastic. And as I said, I think this is a great time to be looking at, uh, you know, digital advertising and, and paid media on social media because the, you have a captive audience right now, literally almost a captive audience. So <laughs> yes. well, listen, yeah. my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline, SRM. See you off another expert interview again soon. Thank you.